Okay, so next we're going to talk about storytelling and the ethics of telling stories using your data. So stories are essential for communicating your results. So in the World Bank chapter that you read, um, it talked all about how to best communicate your findings of your evaluation to specific audiences and how you need to think about audience needs. Um, that is important. The way you do that is through storytelling. And that sounds kind of more humanities-y than, than just raw science and numbers, but it is a skill that you need to develop. So stories are basically an art form for translating core essential content, so the findings of your evaluation, to different forms. So like a formal written report that would be a policy paper, a formal academic article, a one-page summary for key donors. Um, there's a whole, bunch, a whole bunch of different forms that your evaluation can take. Um, and so those forms have to meet audience needs. And so basically, this is your goal is when you're trying to communicate your, your results, you have to think about how to shape those results in specific forms for specific audiences so that it meets their needs. And so you need to think about the structure of the story to help with that. Um, so one of your readings for today was this video here about how every story is the same. And the focus um, of this video is that um, stories generally talk about um, the path of a hero and how that hero changes throughout the story. And so it, it follows kind of this the standard hero's journey idea. Um, the example used in the video was from Star Wars where you have Luke Skywalker is called to adventure. He goes, they go to the Death Star, they blow it up, and then he's back and he's improved. The same thing happens with Lord of the Rings, with Harry Potter, with basically every story ever invented. That's the, the same process you go through. Um, what I like to argue is that when you, when you communicate the results of your findings to audiences, you also want to take them through the same journey. You want to basically call your audience to adventure um, and say, look at this cool new thing we found. This is our finding of this program. And then you help them find kind of the interesting aspects of it. And then at the end of the report, end of the, the policy paper, they are changed and they can go on and improve the world. Um, that sounds hokey and weird, but it is absolutely true. And the focus as you're communicating your results should be on the audience um, because the audience is the hero. You are not the hero. It is very tempting to make yourself be the hero. You can write a paper saying, this is what I found. I was interested in this. And so then I went and collected all this data. This is what I found. Hooray. But that's not super convincing. If you want to be convincing, focus on the audience. Um, you've all been through um, presentations that look like this. Um, where if somebody's presenting some sort of cool results to you, um, their slides all look like this. They say, here's all the information about us, and then they have a slide for each of these things, and it's just a really long, boring presentation because the focus is entirely on them. It is not focused on what the audience needs to hear to be able to learn from the story of, of their results. So what you need to do as you're writing up the results of your evaluation for your final project, or as you write about any sort of result, um, any sort of analysis you do, think about the audience and try to tailor your findings and tailor your writing, um, tailor your whole presentation to their needs. What do they need to know? Do they need to know your company history and market cap and the number of employees you have? No, that's useful for you, I guess, but who cares? You're trying to, to give some sort of information about some consulting project, some evaluation that you do. Don't focus on yourself, focus on them. Um, and focus on telling a story. Um, this gets a little bit ethically tricky. So I had you read this short article here um, by Alberto Cairo and his co-author, um, where he basically argues that you should tell stories. You should structure your analysis so it has an introduction, it has a question, it has conflict, it has buildup, and it has a resolution. It follows that hero's journey, but in an analysis, which feels weird, again, but that's a good way of communicating um, powerful findings and, and being convincing. Um, there was a rebuttal to that article uh, a couple of months after they initially published that, where they said you, it can be dangerous to do this 
because you can manipulate people into what you want them to know, um, which is, is potentially dangerous. When you're telling a story, um, the story is not necessarily objective. Um, again, just the raw data is objective. Anything you're doing with the data, if you decide to make a scatter plot, that is a, a subjective choice to take an aspect of the data and show it in a specific way. So already you're doing subjective stuff anyway with the things that you're modeling, um, with the pictures that you're making, with the tables you're presenting. Um, but what what um, Yard and Katz here argues is that even just telling the story about your data can also lead to potential risks where you're going to lead the audience to potentially incorrect conclusions. So that is something to be aware of. And so what I want to present here are some potential pitfalls to telling stories with data um, that can lead audiences to incorrect conclusions. You should tell stories with data. You should think about the audience. They are your hero. You're guiding them through the journey of, of seeing your findings, accepting them, and changing the world with them. But you want to avoid these three pitfalls. Um, the pitfall of manipulation, where you don't want to lie or manipulate the data in a way that will lead to some conclusion that you want. Um, you don't want to misinterpret the results or allow the audience to misinterpret the results. Um, so the, the general recommendation here is to temper expectations. Um, make it so the audience doesn't go too crazy with your results and say, this will change the entire world. Like, you don't want that. Um, and then finally, the idea of equity. Um, when you're presenting your results as a story, you don't want to dumb it down. Um, instead, you're going to be translating the story. And there's a slight difference, and we'll talk about that. And you also want to amplify underrepresented voices. Let me move myself here. So when you're telling a story, you want to make sure that you're relying on other people's research, but you want to um, amplify people who are not represented as often in research, people who are marginalized um, or forgotten in different research fields. And so we'll talk about each of these pitfalls um, in turn.